Hello! My name is Anne and <clears throat> Toby's over there, but welcome to a Toby Knits podcast, episode 131. Um, if you're new to my channel, then welcome. I am a Brit, now living in Canada. I've been here about 40 odd years and uh, don't really use my Liverpool accent very much, but I'm a huge Liverpool fan. And of course we won today, yay! Um, <clears throat> yeah, and um, I love knitting, cross stitch, crochet, quilting, all the crafty things and love to share and talk about it all the time. Um, <clears throat> I have suffered the past eight weeks with uh, bronchial pneumonia and as you can tell I still have a hard time with my voice. It's getting better, a lot better. The cough is gone. Well, almost. And um, I've got my nice cup of tea to keep me lubricated. Uh, a chai latte today. Mm -mm. And I am sitting in the living room because I thought it'd just be more comfy and a bit more light than in my basement at this time of the day. It is Sunday. It is 3.30 in the afternoon. Very dismal rainy day outside today. I think it's about 14 degrees, which it's kind of funny because when we're in the middle of our deep freeze winters, you dream of 14 degrees and you think, oh wow. And the first week or two of spring, when it's 14, we're like outside with no jackets on and we're like, oh, this is great, you know. Now, like into our spring a little bit, 14 degrees still, it feels cold again now. It feels chilly, especially when it's raining. It's like, ooh, I'm staying in today. Anyway, hello, Toby. Hello, Toby, what are you doing? Hello, my Toby, Toby. Hello, hello, are you saying hello to everybody? What? Oh, he thinks there's somebody outside now. Anyway, I got lots to tell you, lots to show you, so let's get on. I am using a new camera. <clears throat> well, it's not really a new camera. My dad gave me this camera about a year or two ago on one of our trips, and he's taken this little Sony camera everywhere with him. Uh, over the past, I don't even know how long. It's a 3.5 megapixel, so it's, you know what I mean? It's like quite old now. And he'd take it everywhere with him on cruises with my mom and vacations and took all kinds of great, you know, anyway. So he gave it to me thinking it would be good for me to do my podcasts and everything. And so I'm trying it. Uh, for the longest time, I couldn't find the charge cord. <laughs> Finally found that, so I figured I'd have a go and see what happens. Uh, if this will make things easier or not. I don't know. Anyway, we'll find out. So, I've got three finished objects. One of which I literally just finished a half an hour ago watching the football. And I did not enjoy this particular project. And it was my dishcloth. I love the finished result. So here it is, finished. I love this finished result with this beautiful like diamond pattern in it. I hated the yarn. It was, I don't even know where I got this yarn. I found it in my stash. It didn't have a ball band. And it's so stiff. And I had a hard time pushing it off the needles. And when you're doing lots of knit pearls, knit three pearl one, knit two pearls, whatever. You need a nice, I was gonna say lubricated needle. <laughs> Gosh, a nice um, slippy needle. And the one I had was not. So I really hated it. It took me, well, it was not always the first thing I wanted to pick up and do. And I ended up, I could have probably done or I should have probably done one more complete uh, diamond because I think it was we did one and then repeated it five times so there would have been six but I only had that much yarn left and I didn't think that would go through eight rows so I finished it after that which you know I was quite happy for oh quite happy for so there's that 
<clears throat> then, let me get a bit closer. Then I finished not one pair of socks, but two. Okay, so first one I finished was our sock of the month that we've been doing. So again, if you're new to my channel, I have a Facebook group called Toby Knits and Friends. You have to click on it and ask to join. And what we do is once a month, well, we talk to each other all the time, show each other new things, um, put up um, maybe yarn we've purchased, and uh, just generally chit chat. And it's most of the people from who watch this podcast, so it's great for me because I actually get to see what everybody else is working on. And I usually have a sock of the month and a dishcloth of the month, which is where this thing came from. And I try to pick dishcloth patterns and sock patterns that are free and if I can't find something that I like that's a free pattern then I will ask a designer to give us a discount and most of them have over the months so then at the end of the month I was so yesterday but no today is the end of the month but tomorrow I will close off comments on both of the um, posts where you have to put your finished items and then I will do the draw to see who's going to win something. And I'm not telling you what it is you're going to win. It's going to be a surprise. So I, the socks that we chose, or I chose, was called Spring Cable. And it has this gorgeous little cable that runs all the way up the side, which is um, which is uh, highlighted, no, which is surrounded by some seed stitch. And so one side has it on one side and the other sock has it on the other. So when you wear them, they're there. And one, one goes one way and the other goes the other way. And this yarn is my um, daffodil. Oh, do you know what? I couldn't remember the name of it then. Isn't that ridiculous? This is my daffodil yarn, which is a lovely yellow, although it tends to sometimes come off more green because it does have the green speckles and the deep yellow speckles in it too. And uh, the other side, of course, is just plain. I feel really cack-handed holding this sock locker like this. I feel like I'm going to drop it. Um, yeah, so they are lovely. I love them. Is that a better light? Let's see if I can get a better light over here. And then... I'm li literally just playing with this camera because it has a, a wide-angle lens. Anyway, so this was our socks. Now, when I first started doing the sock of the month, I had already started a pair of socks using some, um, do you remember that sock pattern? That was lovely, wasn't it? What was it called? Quilted something? The quilted stripe? And uh, that was um, using all minis. <clears throat> So when I decided I wanted to start dyeing yarn and doing a birth flower of the month, when I dyed the January birth flower up in January, which was carnation, I used it to make my February sock. So then every month after that, the, so the color I dyed became the following month's sock. So it would confuse me. I'm pretty sure it confused all of you too. Because I would say like, oh, I'm doing the February sock in the January colorway or whatever. So I decided, because this of course was our March colorway, which was the daffodil, but this was the April sock. So I decided to very quickly make up a pair of um, short socks, plain vanilla, in the actual April sock yarn flower, which was the Gerba Daisy. So here this one is. 
And it's just a plain vanilla sock. A plain vanilla sock. Let me get it a bit closer for you. Just a regular heel flap and turn. I cast on 64 stitches and did 12 rows of knit to purl two. Then I did 15 rows of plain knit before I did the heel flap and turn. And then I did the gusset and then I did 40 rows of foot before I did the umbrella toe, which is one of my favorite toes from Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. So this is the Gerber Daisy colorway. And this was my April sock. Oh, look how close I am to you now. Woo! <laughs> Gotta get used to it. I, when we go to the States, I said to my dad, because my dad's coming uh, three weeks today, I think, or is it? Yeah, three weeks today. And he's going to be here for a week and then with my brother. And then my brother and my dad and me, we're going to the States for a few days. We're going to New York City. Um, and my dad said, what are you looking for to get? Because we always buy stuff when we're there. And I said, I'd like to get a new actual camera that's a bit more megapixely, And maybe with a um, remote control so I could sit here and click a button and make it come in. And instead of me reaching over to do it and not knowing which way I'm supposed to push the button. <clears throat> anyway, so... No. Sorry, there was a squirrel or something. Could be a person walking. He gets very upset with the squirrels. No! Nobody wants to know about your squirrel. Nobody wants to know about your squirrel. You sit here with me like a good boy. Right there. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Thanks, Toby. Totally forgot what I was saying. Um, hmm. I don't even know. But anyway, so this was the, um, so now, oh, that's what I was going to say. So now I'm all caught up. So when I actually do the May socks, which look like this, I'm going to use the yarn, which is the May colorway, which is this. And this is, um, I'm all ready to go. This is called uh, Lily of the Valley. So half of my, the skein was white and the other half was this gorgeous pale green. So I'm curious to see how that's going to knit up. So that will be fun. Um, yeah, so that will be the Mace Hawks. Um, <coughs> I feel like, so those are my finished objects uh, for this month. And I feel like, too, that um, I'm going to be doing a lot of socks this month. And I'll explain all that to you in a little bit. But one thing I did want to show you is, and I'll get into the cross stitch first. No, it's not cross stitch, and it's crochet. It's crochet. Um, I have started the Granny Hexagon cardigan. So remember I told you about that last time? So I thought, okay, what I wanted to do it in fingering weight because I wanted to use this gorgeous, scrumptious color that I dyed up. And this color is spring, Ontario spring, because it's all the daffodils and tulips, well mostly tulips, at um, Parliament Hill under the lovely blue skies in the Parliament Hill uh, in Ottawa, Ontario, where I live very close to. So, and this is on 100% merino, so it's not a sock yarn, although you probably could use it for sock, but it just wouldn't last very long. Um, but it would be super soft and warm, but oh, it's really scrumptiously soft. And this is, um, you could use shawls, you could do cows, hats, that kind of thing. Um, but I decided I wanted to make the granny cardigan. And I thought I didn't want to do it in one color, even though this is a multicolored. So I dyed up some beautiful blue that goes with this blue. So I thought these two colors together 
together would be phenomenal. What do you think? Isn't that pretty? I just love it. And so I decided that I would use those two colors. Now the other colorway I was thinking about was this one of course is um, the Gerpa Daisy, the April colorway on the 100% Merino. So you can see the way the color takes differently to the regular sock yarn because it's a little plumper and very pretty. Anyway, so this was the only one I had dyed on the 100% Merino. <clears throat> so then I thought, if I did a brown to go with this, wouldn't that look fabulous for a hexi cardigan for the fall? Or maybe a green. Maybe a green and a brown. I could do the three colors. Anyway, this was the brown I dyed up and I only did the one to try it. So anyway, those, but no, I decided I wanted to go back to this. So then I thought, okay, what needle size should I use? Because it's fingering weight. <clears throat> but I didn't want it to be too, too small, but I wanted it to be a light and airy sweater for um, the summer. I didn't want a thick, heavy cardigan in the summer. I wanted something, you know, nice airy drapey. So I got out my crochet hook and I got out a size 4 and I made this using leftover yarn from now look how different they look when they're crocheted and when it's knit. Not pretty though. So that's on the 4 millimeter hook. And I thought, okay, well, that feels like it's, you know, got drap. So anyway, there was that one. So then I tried a 3.75. And this is on the daffodil. And this came out really nice too. So they actually came out because there's not much of a size difference between 375 and 4. Although this does look a little bit more condensed than that. Anyway, I decided I would go with the 4 because I like to have a little bit of... I just thought I'd go with the 4. Yeah. So I started it. So I wound up my gorgeous Ontario spring and the lovely blue. I did dye two of these because I think I'll need two of these because the plan will be um, to... Here's a picture of the cardigan itself. So you make two... Um, not hexagons. What is the word? Octagon? No, that's eight. What's six? Anyway, a six-sided uh, thing. <laughs> so you make two of them. I'm trying to find where my needle goes here. Where's the, oh, there. Let's make this bigger so I don't lose it. And here is what it looks like so far. Isn't it gorgeous? So I went with two rounds of blue to start, then two rounds of the color, then two rounds of blue, two rounds of color. And I'll, you keep doing that till it reaches a certain size because this particular pattern is a made to measure for yourself. And then what you're supposed to do when you've got this to the right size and you have to measure from here to here and they tell you in the pattern. Um, and there is actually a tutorial you can follow. And then you fold it in half like this. And then that is one side of the cardigan. So, but it would be obviously bigger. 
but you can see and then you would make a second one and it goes on this side. Then you add extras in the back and then depending on how long you want your sleeve, then you would taper the sleeve down to a cuff and then you would add more length if you wanted it longer or if you wanted the crop type, you just left it. But I'm going to do the rest of the cuff, the rest of the length, the band that will go around the neck, all in the pale blue. So that's why I think I'll need two balls of that. But isn't it pretty? And it's so cool because even though this this is the two here, because there's still the blue in here, it just all flows into one. Like it doesn't look like two rows of blue, two rows of color, two rows of blue, two rows of another color. Like it just all flows. So I think it's going to look really nice. And I haven't crocheted for ages and ages. <clears throat> and um, it's kind of funny because uh, my thumb started hurting again. And I do have arthritis in my thumb. Osteoarthritis, I think they call it. And I do... Uh, I thought it was knitting all the time and the pearl and pushing the, the needle along... The th you know, I thought it was pushing the stitches on the needle, but it turns out I don't think that's what it is. I, I think it's the crochet and the way I must hold the, um, the crochet when I'm working on it. Because I'm trying to find... Does your thing... I should have put a... Oh, there it is. Because <laughs> when I'm holding it, this is the hand that's doing all the business. But the way I grip it, the fabric, even just now doing that, just pushing my thumb into this finger to hold the fabric hurts. So I'm going to have to be careful how long each evening I spend on crocheting, I think. Anyway, that's how the crochet is coming, and I'm loving it. <clears throat> and that's the only crocheting I'm doing. So let me look at my notes again, see where we are. So... <coughs> the other two things I've got on the go is the Scrappy V T, and I actually don't think I've done any more of this since I last showed you. Uh, here is the front, and I'm down to working on a very pale blue at the bottom here. And this is the back. Um, I think it's going to be lovely, but I haven't like I do, I haven't worked on this much this week, so there's not really much to show other than I put this color on. These are yarns I got last year from Ellie of Craft House Magic when I signed up for her. Um, Mixtape Minis, which was a monthly uh, club that she sent out yarn, uh, five skeins of minis, and I'm putting them all into that. So, I'm watching the Blue Jays game at the same time. I have it on mute, but I'm still watching it. Blue Jays are winning 8-5. It's been such a great day today. I got up this morning, it's quarter to seven. Yes, I set my alarm for quarter to seven. I know. Who does that on a day off? Who does that when they're retired? But I did, because um, F1, the, the race started at seven o'clock. So I had to get up and make sure I had a cup of tea, let the dog out for a pee, and then get comfy on the couch. And uh, so then I watched that for like two hours. Um, then the Bakery Bears came and did their Patreon live, so I was on that for an hour, chit-chatting with them and hearing all about the plans they've got this coming summer. And then, uh, then I got up, took the dog for a walk, came back, and then um, football was on. It was a Liverpool game, so I got to watch that for another hour and a half, and of course Liverpool won, so that was excellent. Um, then that finished, and now the baseball game's so on. <laughs> it's just like a super sport Sunday for me. <clears throat> and yes, my husband's still at work. Yay! So I get to watch it all by myself. 
Um, so, yeah, that. And then the other thing I have been working on and loving immensely is... Where's the other side? There. The um, Bakery Bears My Favorite Blanket. Now, this is one that Kay Jones is doing, and this is how I ended up starting the, the Road to Dying yarn. Because each month she comes out with a new color for us to dye based on a flower. And uh, then a pattern that we're knitting into a blanket. So as you may recall, it started with this one. And I'm not even telling you the flower names because I can't half remember half of them. And I'm sure you all do because you've seen this so many times now. You probably know the flowers better than I do. So this was our start, which was a green and a brown and it's two balls of 50 gram yarn and I'm using 80% um, merino, 20% angora and it's yarn I got from Knit Picks uh, in the States, a bear yarn that I dyed. <clears throat> so there's that. The next color was this one, this very pretty red and orange. The next color was this one, which I love. It's a blue and a green. Motorbikes, they make so much noise. Uh, of course, my grandmother would say, blue and green should never be seen. This was the one last month. which was another red and a green. And then this is the one for this month, which is absolutely amazing. It's a green and a purple. And we actually now, as you can see, um, have a pattern. So for the most part, it was the same all the way through. And you can watch them on her video channel. This is not a Patreon only. Um, and she goes through, after she's dyed the colorway, she then tells you about how to make the blanket. And you don't have to dye. You can go and get your own yarn from your stash and just make it. Um, but basically you start here with three stitches and then you knit a row, knit from back, turn, knit a row, knit from back, turn, knit a row, knit, that's the whole pattern. And you just keep doing that, adding and adding rows all the way through. So it's like a corner to corner blanket. But now we've got to this part, which is the middle. And the middle bunch, one side is still the make one side, but the other side we are now decreasing. Because I think it's going to wind up being a, a, a rectangle, I think. So we have a little bit of extra fun to work on in this. So, and then in two weeks, she'll be telling us the next colors and the next, I don't know if it's a new pattern or if it's the same pattern, but just, you know, different stitch count. I don't know. But that's how my favorite blanket is. And these are the two colors I am holding together. This gorgeous purple. I'm trying to get the right, there, the right light. And this gorgeous green. I love this color immensely. I might have to dye up a skein of that for a pair of socks. Because I think it's gorgeous. So that's my favorite blanket. And then the crochet cardigan. So I've shown you the things I've been working on. Now I'm going to show you the stuff I'm going to be casting on. <clears throat> so I did tell you, I shall still be working this, the scrappy V and, and the blanket. There will be a new dishcloth, which is this one. And I picked up two new um, dishcloth yarns, which are in the basement, uh, and I'm not going down to get them. One is a green and one is a multicolored. So I'm not sure yet which one I want to do. I feel like it's going to be the green because that looks like grass to me. <laughs> so um, 
there'll be that casting on soon. And then there is the um, Curious Handmaids. Um, what is it? The Sock Soci Secret Sock Society. Handmade Sock Society. Handmade Secret Sock Society. Sock Society Handmade. There was a sock that was handmade. No. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all links will be below to these things I'm going to be casting on, and I have talked about this before. So it starts May 5th, and I was going to do the April sock, May sock, in the May yarn with that, but I'm not going to. I'm doing that lovely one I just showed you before, the little shorty with the ribby effect thing. Um, so I decided I would use a different um, color and it's based on some kind of curiosity cupboard or something. Anyway, so the color I'm going to be doing, I pulled this out of stash and I did show it you last week on the live. <coughs> And this sock is, I've had it in my stash for ages. It's an island fiber. And um, I feel like they're, they're in uh, New North Carolina, Hatteras Island. And um, this colorway is mermaid. So I thought I would I use this one um, from my stash to make the um, <laughs> what's it called again? What did I just say it was? Oh my goodness, I'm losing my mind. Handmade Secret Sock Society. Handmade Sock Society. Secret Socks is for that, which starts May the 4th, and um, each month for the next six months. I will get a new sock pattern, that's a secret, till the day it's released. And then you get the whole pattern on the day it's released and you get to make it. And so I'm going to do this yarn with it. Now, I kind of loved this. Let me show you this. When I got this yarn, and I don't know where I got it from, I feel like I may have won it somewhere. I don't remember. Um, but this is called Mermaid, and with it came this lovely bracelet that you put on, which has the little, looks like charms on them, but they're stitch markers. It's from the same girl, from the same company. So here are the stitch markers, look. We have got this lovely shell. I don't really know what that is. <laughs> um, come on, get out of the way so I can see you. We've got a star. Starfish it's probably supposed to be, because it's a... We've got this. A mermaid's tail. So aren't they cute? So I put them in the bag so that I can use them when I'm doing these socks. And I'm not sure yet, because I don't know what the sock pattern will look like yet, but I did pick up some 9 inch 2.25 uh, circulars. I've never tried them. I don't know if I'm going to like them. But I thought I'll give one of my socks that I'm making a go. Because there are three pairs of socks, as I said, I'm making. So there's my May socks. The Secret Society socks. I don't even think that's what it's called, but whatever. And then, as I said, the Bakery Bears are going to be doing, they're calling it the Summer of Stitches. Now it is for their Patreons, but it's not expensive to be a Patreon. And you get so many extra videos from them, because normally they just put a video out for every two weeks. But you get so many extra videos, like two and three a week. And not that they're very long, and a lot of them are tutorials from Kay. 
And anyway, so the Supper of Stitches, what they're doing is it starts in June. No, May. May. <clears throat> Today or tomorrow? May the 1st or the 2nd. And it goes all the way through till the end of August, I think. So the first month, we're going to be making a pair of socks, which are called the Beachcombers. Here's a picture. Aren't they gorgeous? And um, <clears throat> then when they're done, and I think they're going to take us six weeks or so, and she's going to hold our hand. So if you've never knit a pair of socks before, you may want to just join for this, because she will hold your hand and do the videos all the way through. Um, and then... Um, we are going to do a cross stitch, which is um, a really pretty summer beachy, like summer houses or something on it. And then when that cross stitch is finished, we're going to turn the cross stitch into a bag, into a project bag. Right up my alley. Number one, it's knitting. Number two, it's cross stitching. Number three, it's bag making. I mean, come on. How could this just not even be for me? I feel like it was for me. So of course, I had to go down and dye some yarn. And it's not dry yet, but I wanted to show you because it's beautiful. And the one she made it with is with, she got it from another, like somebody in England, I don't know. Uh, um, and she wanted it to look like the color of sand. So I thought, how am I gonna do that with the colors that I have, right? So I mix two colors up. Look. Oh. Is that not the prettiest thing ever? Does that not look like sand to you? Because it looks like sand to me. Oh, it's so pretty. It really is pretty. totally looks like sand to me. Anyway, so that's what I'm going, it's drying. I dyed it this morning. So it's going to dry and uh, it takes about 24 hours for yarn to dry. It takes a long time. And I'm fussy because I want to make sure it's totally dry. And uh, so that will become my beach coma socks. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's everything I'm going to be doing, which is an awful lot this next month. Plus my dad's coming. Plus, we're going to New York City. I don't know how I'm going to fit it all in. But, you know, I will. Anyway, that's all I'm going to tell you now. So, yeah, my tea's nearly done. How my tea's doing? Are they still doing good? The score is... Oh. How can it be 7-8? See, I've been that busy talking to you guys. I miss them getting a whole pile of runs. Oh dear. But we're in the top of the eight, so we're okay. Two out. Mm. Mm. Okay, I'm going. I shall try to edit this and get this up for you tomorrow. And uh, I'll talk to you next Monday. Okay. Bye.